This is really bad. Let's talk about it. Before that, this video is brought to you by Brilliant. Brilliant is a great tool for people of all ability levels who are looking to learn new skills or just brush up on things you might have forgot without having to pay the insanely high prices of taking classes, getting a mentor, or going back to school. Brilliant is, in my opinion, the best way to learn new things because it makes it fun and engaging with their hands-on approach to learning using clear and intuitive explanations so you stay engaged and don't get lost searching for answers on Google. Plus, with its wide variety of courses, there's something for everyone, and personally, I love taking a look at their chemical reactions courses as I've always found science to be a lot of fun. Not only that, but it's completely free to get started. So if you're looking for a great way to learn new skills and you want to support the channel, check out brilliant.org slash graphically challenged linked in the description or pinned comment, but hurry because the first 200 people get an exclusive 20% off. So AMD just announced a ton of really exciting stuff during their Computex 2022 keynote, but there's also some really devastating information that was revealed as well. Now, first of all, let's go ahead and talk about the good stuff, and then I'll get into my concerns. And the great thing that was talked about today was Ryzen 7000. It was officially announced, and according to AMD, it's going to use a 5 nanometer TSMC process for the core and a 6 nanometer TSMC process for the I/O, which is definitely going to increase their efficiency pretty substantially. It's also going to be using a brand new AM5 socket, which is going to be using LGA finally, thank God. Because believe me guys, I am sick and tired of fixing Ryzen CPUs with bent pins, and I think LGA is going to go a long way in fixing that. Apparently it's also going to have an RDNA 2 GPU included with every single CPU as far as I'm aware. It should also support faster 5200 MHz DDR5, boost up to 5.5 GHz on their best SKUs, which is actually really, really impressive, and it's going to have up to 16 big cores, so it's definitely going to be decimating the 12900K when it comes to some multi-core performance but there's one thing i didn't mention when going over all these specs and that's the ipc and i didn't mention it and neither did amd probably for a good reason because guys it is not looking good and this is where things start to get really really bad because during their presentation they actually mentioned that it was going to have over 15 percent now 15 percent does actually sound good if you're thinking ipc but unfortunately it looks like this is not going to be ipc hardware and boxed also mentioned that yeah they were told by amd this is not ipc this is single thread performance which means that's actually going to be IPC plus clock speed which is definitely really disappointing to say the least and I'll talk about more in just a little bit here why 15% is just so disappointing but real quick just to prove it to you guys here's a snippet from Tom's hardware that proves that yes this is single threaded performance that we're talking about so according to Tom's hardware they say quote AMD tells us this comes from a mixture of instructions per cycle IPC and frequency improvements but won't share the specific percentage each factor contributes until later AMD says the chips will reach significant significantly above a 5 gigahertz peak frequency and even demoed a 16 core model hitting 5.5 gigahertz. However, that comes with the standard caveat that the frequency only applies to a single core during a light bursty workload, just as we've seen with Zen 2 and Zen 3 processors. So there you have it pretty much from the horse's mouth. It looks like yes indeed, we are talking about greater than 15% performance increase when you compare Zen 4 to Zen 3 processors. Now there has been some talk of quote unquote sandbagging. Now, if you don't know, people talk about this a lot when new AMD products are coming out, and sandbagging is essentially referring to AMD holding something back, like they're not showing their highest clock speed or their best part or something like that to try and confuse their competitor. Now, honestly, guys, I think this time around that doesn't make any sense whatsoever, and here's why. Now, these CPUs are going to be launching very soon here. We're talking about probably in the next quarter as well as Raptor Lake at roughly the same time. So if AMD were to sandbag a processor, they probably probably would have done it maybe like a year in advance or something like that, but to do it so close to the launch simply doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever and honestly is just going to bring negativity to the AMD brand. Honestly, guys, right now is the time to be driving hype, not sandbagging, so that doesn't make any sense to me at all. So honestly, I think we are probably talking about at best 20% single-threaded performance increase, although it's probably going to be closer to like 17%, which is definitely not going to be good, and it could be actually putting AMD in a situation where not only are they not going to beat Raptor Lake anymore, but they could actually end up falling short, and here's why. Now, if you take a look at hardware and box numbers when comparing the 12900K to the 5950X, what you're going to notice is that the 12900K is actually 27% faster in Cinebench single-threaded performance, and it's also very, very quick in stuff like Photoshop, so it's definitely got a massive lead over the 5950X right now. So even if AMD were sandbagging and they had something like 20 to 30% single-threaded performance and not like 17%, uh, 
uh, even that isn't going to be enough to actually overtake Intel's Alder Lake CPUs when it comes to stuff like Cinebench single threaded performance. Now we do know that the single threaded performance doesn't necessarily 100% translate to gaming performance and in fact if we go ahead and take a look at hardware and box numbers once again what you'll notice is the 12900K is only 2.5% faster on average in games at 1080p and 7% faster on the 1% low but that also brings up the question even if AMD were sandbagging and they had something in the 25% faster single threaded performance would it even fully translate to gaming performance and that's something that we simply don't know but on top of that if you take a look at you know the actual price to performance of this stuff even if AMD prices these CPUs very very well unfortunately they are locked into DDR5 so that means that while Intel is going to be supporting DDR4 and DDR5 you have to choose DDR5 with Zen 4 meaning that the platform cost is just by default going to be much much higher so yeah overall honestly guys I'm actually very very disappointed in these Zen 4 CPUs and this is actually very shocking to me because I was actually expecting Zen 4 to stomp all over Raptor like and it looks like that's not going to be the case at the very least in fact you know maybe AMD will come very very close to Raptor Lake but again like I mentioned earlier they might end up even losing not only in the single threaded performance but maybe even in gaming and maybe even in multi-core performance because Raptor Lake is going to add double the amount of e-cores once again and that is going to make a significant difference in that multi-core performance and this yeah I, again I, I'm really shocked and disappointed by this because from someone who's owned Ryzen CPUs all the way from the 1000 series to the 5000 series and multiple SKUs in every single generation I was really hoping that AMD would continue its cadence of bringing really big performance increases every single generation and I'm honestly hoping guys that they have some sort of like 3D cache variant behind their back so there's something that they're holding back because if this is the case that we're going to be seeing maybe like 17% increase in single threaded performance that's very disappointing and it's going to make things so that things are going to continue to be very very expensive if Intel doesn't continue to get very very tough competition from AMD. But hey that's just what I think. Do you think the AMD sandbagging or do you think that they actually don't have any more performance than roughly 15%? Let me know your guys thoughts in the comments below and of course I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so AMD and Nvidia get more stock. Also if you want to see more click here you won't be disappointed.